Hello friends, my name's Kayla. I'm an American English teacher and today I'm going to teach you 20 phrases for everyday life if you're speaking American English. Let's get started. Anything goes. When there are no rules to something, so there's no rules that you have to follow, there's no laws, there's no regulations, you can just say anything goes. In the United States, some places you can just dress however you want to dress. You can wear pajamas, you can wear shorts, you can wear flip-flops, you can even just wear a formal gown. But in our schools in the United States, I would say it's very strict. So you can use this phrase positively. You can say anything goes here. You can dress however you want. Or you can say not just anything goes here. We say not just anything goes if there are rules. So you can either say that there are no rules and anything goes, or there is a strict policy in place and not anything goes. The next phrase is indeed a punctuation mark. This means it's a mark that we use in our writing. The mark is period. So normally when we write a period, it ends our sentence. It ends the thought or idea that we're saying. If we say period, so we're not writing, we're speaking, it means that that is final, that is very definitive, what we just said. So you could have a definitive idea. You could say after a very long and difficult day, it is always nice to just take a nap and eat some chocolate, period. That means that's all you have to do. It makes you feel better. It's a very definitive statement. It's just a nice word to emphasize what you have just said. A new slang phrase that I've noticed a lot on TikTok and other social media platforms is when people say that's on period. And that's on period. <laughs> And that's on period. That's on period. That's on what? Oh, period. That's on period. You understand? It's on, it's on period. And that's on period. And that's on period. That's on period. And that's on period. That's on period. And that's on period. That's on so they are saying, I am not playing around. It is very definitive. You are very serious if you finish your sentence saying, and that's on period. People say it really quickly, that's on period. You should study English every day, that's on period. I always like to teach English phrases and words that you would think just means whatever it says in the dictionary, but we like to use it a different way while speaking the language. This next word, preach, usually if you are preaching something, you're very passionate about an idea or you're preaching a religion. That's probably the most common way this word is used traditionally to preach a religion. Someone who preaches a religion is called a preacher. But nowadays, if someone is talking really passionately about something and we agree with their opinion and we also think that they should keep saying their opinion, we might yell, preach, preach it. That means just like, keep going, say that idea. So someone might be talking really passionate about something that annoys them. People drive way too slow in this country. They drive below the speed limit. They need to really drive faster. Preach. This just means that they agree enthusiastically and they want them to keep talking about it. Here's a phrase that you can use to talk about loyalty or being loyal to something or someone. You can say since day one. So if you have liked something since day one, it means you have liked it since its early days or since it just started. For instance, I always say that I liked Adele since day one, since her first album, which was titled 19. Now, I didn't literally like Adele since she was born, since the first day of her life, but the second that I heard her, the first time I heard her, I liked her, so I liked her since day one. You can also say, I've been friends with Sheila since day one. Sheila has been my best friend since day one. This means since the moment I met her or the first time I met her, we have been best friends. So I use this phrase a lot to talk about things that I have liked for a very long time or things that have been in my life for a very long time since I've known them. Sometimes if you want to say that you would maybe accept an idea, you're not completely sure, 
you might be open to it. You can say, I'm open to it. Maybe you are open to something because you need to hear more information about the idea or the opportunity, but you are probably going to agree to it or accept it if you're open to it. If you just respond and say, I'm open to it, it doesn't mean you're enthusiastic about it, but it means you might be. Maybe someone asks you, do you want to move somewhere warm someday? And you say, I'm not sure, I haven't really thought about it, but I'm definitely open to the idea. This means that you haven't necessarily said that you don't want to do it, but you haven't given it enough thought. You're just open to it. So this expression, to top something, it's kind of a two-part explanation here. If you top something, it means you have done better than before. You have done better than previously. I think that this phrase really comes from the idea that we say, this is the cherry on top. So the cherry on top literally is the cherry on top of ice cream. It's really yummy. It's really delicious, as we like to say. And even though ice cream's really good, if you put a cherry on top of it, it just makes it even better. It makes it fancy and it's really enjoyable and pleasant. You could say something like, I had a great day at work, but the cherry on top was that I have a vacation day tomorrow. So this means you had a good day, and the thing that made the day better was you know you have a vacation day the next day. So it's a two-part phrase. You have something good and the cherry on top of something that makes it even better. So now we get to the phrase to top something. You have something good. For a really young child in the United States, it would be incredibly difficult to top a vacation to Disney World. Kids love Disney World and Disneyland and it's hard to beat that. It's hard to do something better, so it's hard to top it. This phrase is really confusing for English learners, to say the least. This phrase, to say the least, is usually added on to a sentence about how you feel about something. So you can say, I was really excited on my wedding day, to say the least. This means I'm not exaggerating, I'm just saying like, how I was feeling, but I probably felt even better, even more exciting and more emotional on my wedding day. Which is true. I was excited, to say the least, on my wedding day. I was also very nervous to be at my wedding with all these people looking at me, and I was incredibly happy too, but I was excited, to say the least. I say this expression to English learners all of the time, so I want to make sure that you understand it. The phrase is, are you with me? This phrase, are you with me, means the exact same as, do you understand? Or do you understand so far what I have been saying? I will be explaining some sort of grammar concept or some sort of vocabulary word. And if the person's face just looks a little confused, I will say, are you with me? This just means, do you understand? So in English, when we're explaining things, you can respond, I'm with you, I understand, or you can respond, no, I'm totally lost. If you are lost, it means you don't have a clue, you don't understand at all what the person is saying. So you can say, yes, I'm with you, or I follow, or you can say, I'm totally lost. Okay, let's shake things up and let's move on to some more difficult English phrases. Did you hear that phrase? The phrase is to shake things up. If you shake things up, it means you're changing something. You're changing the way that things are. It's just a very natural phrase you can use to say to change things. Sometimes when I'm sick of popular music on the radio, I will shake things up and turn on old music that I like on Spotify. Ah. Uh. Typical. This phrase, typical, is usually used when you're irritated with something or you're being sarcastic about it. If something always annoys you and the person does it again, you might say, ugh, that's just so typical. This means this is their normal behavior that annoys you. Here in the United States, when we have to go get our driver's license, we go to the Department of Motor Vehicles. And it is very typical for this to be an extremely slow and irritating process. So every time I have to get a new driver's license, 
I go to this building, I go to this service, and it's always such a wait, and I will be waiting in line, and I'll just be shaking my head saying, oh, typical. Here is an extremely natural phrase, telltale signs. If something is a telltale sign, it is a very typical or very usual sign or signal that something has happened or something is going to happen. So the telltale sign that there is going to be a tornado is the sky is very dark and sometimes looks kind of green and the wind is blowing hard. Those are just telltale signs that there's going to be a big storm or a tornado. If you want to say you're not sure what's going to happen and something has a 50% chance of happening and not happening, you can say it's a toss up. This phrase comes from the toss of a coin. So when you flip a coin, there's a 50% probability it will be heads or a 50% probability it'll be tails. And sometimes we can say that something is just a coin toss. It's just left up to chance. We're not sure what's going to happen if it's a toss up. So you could say, this game is going to be a toss up. I'm not sure who's going to win. When my house is really messy, it's very dirty, there's clothes and laundry everywhere, I just, I need to get a handle on it. We can use this phrase to get a handle on something when we need to get it under control and we need to get it organized. Sometimes in a classroom full of children, the teacher will be very stressed out and they'll say, I need to get a handle on these children. This just means I need to control them, I need to get them to sit down and be quiet and have good behavior. You can say on your end or on my end. This phrase is especially good for talking to people on the phone when you have a problem. Maybe you have a problem with your internet. Here in the United States, we call up our internet provider and we say, hey, my internet's not working. And they'll say, well, it looks like it's a problem on your end. Have you plugged in the router, the machine for the internet and the Wi-Fi? And you can say, yes, I've already plugged it in. It's a problem on your end. So if you use this phrase on your end or on my end, it means it's my problem or your problem. Sometimes if I'm on the phone and everything's working, I'll say everything's working on my end. How does it look on your end? So this phrase on your end and the phrase on my end is really used when we're talking about problems and we're trying to figure out who is the source of the problem? If you want to say that two things have happened without any break or pause in the middle, you can use the phrase, it happened back to back. A really popular way that this phrase is used is to say that a team has won a championship two years in a row. So maybe your favorite soccer team won in 2019, they won a championship, and in 2020, you could say, my favorite team won back-to-back -back championships. If you've had bad weather two days in a row, you could say, gosh, we got back-to-back -back rainstorms this week. This means two days in a row, there was really bad rainstorms. And you can even add another word to this phrase. You can say, back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. This means that something has happened three times in a row with no pause. If you get really busy, you can say that you got caught up. For instance, if you are late to something, maybe a meeting with friends, you can apologize and you can say, I'm sorry I am late. I got caught up with a lot of work today and it just took up a lot of my time. We use this phrase to say, I got caught up in traffic. This means you were stuck in traffic with lots of cars and it took lots of time to get to where you're going. In the morning, I like to not check my email right away because I get caught up in looking at all of them and it takes time away from doing things that I need to get done. Another phrase that's really useful when you need to organize things and you need to figure things out is to say, sort it out. If you need to figure out your plans for the day, you can say, I have to sort out my plans for the day. This just means you have to figure out what you need to get done and what you want to do as well and how much time it will all take. You're going to sort it all out. Maybe someone at work did not do their job 
and you have to figure out how you're going to get it done, you can say, let's sort it all out. Let's figure out who can do this duty. I have two phrases that are pretty close, but they mean slightly different things. Act out and act up. So we usually use act out when a child is misbehaving. You can say they're really acting out today. But usually when we use this phrase, it means that they're acting out for attention or they're acting out because they have a problem. If they act up, this just means they're you know, usually a young child and they're misbehaving and acting hyper and very wild. Finally, it's a wrap. This phrase is used when you're finished with things. You can say, well, it's a wrap, let's go home. It's just a nice phrase to use at the end of a day or at the end of an activity. It's very informal, so don't use it in writing. You can just say, it's a wrap. When you wrap something up, you finish it or complete it. Thanks for watching this lesson with me. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more American English lessons. I teach natural English conversation phrases that will help you become a fluent English speaker. I'll see you guys in the next English lesson. I have tons of videos just like this one that teach you natural English phrases, so make sure to check out another one on screen so you can learn more English phrases. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye!